Okay, so this is the basically revision day, uh, and I am today I am going to discuss. This is Mustafa Ahmed Mirchawala. Today I am going to discuss the latest past paper, the latest past paper of December, September, December 2021 attempt available on accglobal.com. Okay, now <clears throat> I am sure you guys are working hard because these are ending days, and ending days are very important. And normally, normally, we all work with pressure. this is our routine that means these last days are very productive days for all of us right so uh, recently i attended a meeting so in acca and they told this global issue global issue that uh, those students who failed in applied skills module the major reason of failure is last 40 marks not first 60 marks the major reason of failure is last 40 marks not first 60 marks right they openly told for every paper on average right so it's better it's better to you guys, for you guys to practice last 40 marks more now last 40 marks more especially on the acc software because in on in the exam you have to solve on software right okay plus i have also sent you guys the excel file those who asked me even if it's included in my lms about the excel files of uh, final accounts consolidation and cash flow almost 80% get is solved in that right okay so without wasting any time we are moving towards the last 40 marks the last because in the acc website they only disclose they only disclose the last 40 marks so in according to f7 format and in f7 format last 40 marks contains two questions only 20 20 marks each one normally comes with ratio analysis and the other one is sometime consolidation and sometime final account okay so as the ratio analysis analysis needs more effort so that's why i want to start i want to start with ratio analysis right now okay because right now you guys are fresh okay and now you don't have option to sleep because very few days left so in front of your screen is the latest is is the latest past paper december 2021 attempt and this is the last question of that last question which is which is basically related to ratio analysis and a little bit about consolidation little bit about consolidation okay now let's start the pinardi group operates in fragrance and cosmetic industry fragrance and cosmetic industry that means that means that means they are not they are not dealing with any perishable products it's not food like thing it's not food or something it's not it's a non perishable product okay on on 1st of january x7 keep these dates in mind pinardi company disposed of one of its subsidiaries yes it's part of your course even uh, if you have studied the consolidation complete disposal is part of your course the, the way we buy the running business the way we buy the running business the same way we sell the running business so disposal means sell of running business and i'm sure you all know how to calculate gain or loss on disposal gain or loss on disposal of subsidiary gain or loss on disposal of subsidiary right at the time of disposal and they, in this question in this question they have asked you to in this question they have asked you to calculate this and we'll we'll do it it's it's free marks i should say it's a free marks now silva company penardi that means penardi is the parent penardi is the parent penardi is the parent and that silva is the subsidiary which has just been disposed of on 1st january x7 on 1st january x7 please how much cash we received 42 million this is the disposal proceed this is the disposal proceed we write it dp sometime or disposal proceed okay the voice is perfect voice is perfect please now silva company manufactures jewelry and was sold because the pinardi group wanted to exit this particular sector now see the strategy see the business ratio analysis interpretation topic interpretation topic is about interpretation topic is about business so pinardi was dealing in fragrance cosmetic and one sector was jewelry so now you know why they sold why they sold this company why pinardi group sold this silva company 
because now they 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 didn't want to continue with jewelry business they want to say bye 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 to jewelry business bye bye to jewelry business okay right so that means they are going to concentrate on few things now they are going to concentrate on few things now like 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 fragrance and cosmetic okay so one more thing they sold complete jewelry sector that means jewelry is a separate line of business separate line of business now i would like you to guys to be very very attentive that means jewelry is a separate line of business complete jewelry line of business we have sold so now just think previously we were dealing in three things just use your mind previously we were we had three business fragrance cosmetic and jewelry fragrance cosmetic and jewelry and now we sold the running business of jewelry so this is a very relevant information this is a very important and relevant information to shareholders this is going to be a relevant information for shareholders for shareholders for shareholders so hope you remember one standard ifrs 5 ifrs 5 non current asset held for sale this is the first name and discontinued operation remember held for sale hfs is the pre presentation of sofp but discontinued operation discontinued operation is the presentation of income statement so here we have we have sold a proper operation we have sold a separate line of business we have sold a separate line of business so yes it qualifies for discontinued operation accounting is it's qualified for discontinued operation discontinued operation accounting right because just use your mind previously we were dealing with three free three three businesses and now we sold the running business of jewelry so definitely we should show the breakup we should show the breakup to our shareholders we should show the breakup to our to our shareholders we should show the breakup to our shareholders that we are no longer with this business so don't expect don't expect anything in future from this jewelry side okay so this this presentation going to be relevant for them this presentation going to be relevant for them i hope you got it i hope you got it i hope you got it okay right and one more thing one very good thing very good advice for all of you is that when you studying when you studying these past papers obviously these are not easy these are not easy don't keep this thing in mind that we want to understand everything 100% no 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 even while solving the kit don't expect you will understand each and everything 100% no and no no if you understand 80% that's very good if you understand 70% still good still good you have to clear the paper you don't want 100 marks did you ever score 100 did you ever score 100 in your life no so why you expect why you why you keep this condition that i want to understand each and everything no you have to you should go for maximization not perfection not perfection okay please keep this thing in mind and you will stay happy now start extracts from the from the from the consolidated financial statement now you need to work hard consolidated financial statement of pinardi group for the year ended 31st december x6 and x7 now wait 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 let me let me write their accounting period for you let me write let me write this your accounting period for you see this is 1st january x6 this is 31st december x6 okay and this is 31st december x7 here in this year we had p company we are p company and we had let us say three subsidiary silva a and b s for silva s for silva and a and b just a and b are imaginary names a and b are imaginary names so last year we had three now on the first day look at here on the first day of this next accounting period the first day of next accounting period means 1st january x7 we sold we sold we sold silva we sold silva so that mean in this year we have only two now two left now two left a and b a and b that means silva 
was removed silva silva was sold 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 on the first day of next accounting period so last year in the last year income statement last year consolidated income statement silva was included but this year silva is not included last year silva was included but this year silva is not included obviously because we sold it on the first day we sold it on the first day and i'm sure you know that income statement is always prepared for the year for the year for the year income statement is always prepared for the year for the year so this silva is not included in this current year okay so again one one little issue one little issue if you compare last year with current year if you compare last year with current year obviously this comparison is not like with like this is a basic comment this is a basic comment which you can do last year there were silva business was also included last year silva business was also included but this year this silva business not included so, okay so comparing last year consolidated income statement and this year there is a little issue there will be a little issue of comparison okay i'm sure you got it if you are not sleeping now the two income statement are in front of you the two income statement are in front of you listen 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 if you see the revenue went down the revenue went down from last year to this year uh, can anybody tell me 122 400 less 98 300 122 less 98 300 122 less 98 300 it's 24 100 down okay now operating expenses also down operating expenses also down by something 3 how much 37 400 less 33 700 37 400 less 33 700 how much 3700 okay so just think revenue decreased by a big amount but operating expenses decreased by a little amount now use your common sense one reason one reason for decrease in revenue is the buy by is the buy by of that subsidiary because last year that subsidiary revenue was also part of our income statement last year that subsidiary revenue was also part of our income statement but this year it is not so that's why this is the reason this is the reason this is the reason this is the reason okay so let me explain you with a very good style in the last year see this s was included a and b also s a and b s means silva this year only a and b so if you compare last year with this year this comparison is not good this comparison is not good so make so to make this comparison what which what we should do so to make this comparison like with like what we should do we should go back last year we should we should go back last year and we should remove this s we should go back last year we should go back last year and we should remove this s s this s means silva's silva's revenue from from the last year then if we compare we can we, we can see the true performance of this a and b we can see the true performance of a and b i repeat last time last year it was s a and b silva plus a and b a and b are imaginary names and this year only a and b so this comparison is not like with like so what we should do we should go back last year and we should remove we should remove we should remove silvas we should remove la from last year income statement we should remove silvas revenue so that we can then we can see the comparison like with like as a student you may request sir can you do it sir can you do it for us can you do it for us yes within a minute within a minute i can do it just relax see this see this results obtained from silva's individuals published financial statement can you tell me what is the revenue of silva last year can you see what is the revenue of silva's last year it's 36000 it's 36000 it's 36000 okay last year go back to the above go back to the above income statement see this just subtract 122400 minus 36000 122400 Minus thirty six thousand one hundred one twenty two. It's eighty six four hundred. Eighty six four hundred. That means just think over it. Think over it, please, please. Just think over it. That means last year A and B, the imaginary names, A and B made eighty six four hundred. 
and this year a and b made 98300 last year a and b made 86400 and this year a and b made 98300 so almost 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 increment almost an increment of 12000 means 12 million almost an increment of 12 million dollars which is good which is good that means our existing products working very good our existing products working very good are you getting the point previously when we were comparing this comparison was was not like with like but now it is previously the comparison was not like with like but now the comparison is like with like so last year it was 86400 without s without silva and this year it is 98 98300 98300 this year 98300 okay right okay I think our admin will send a WhatsApp group link. Our admin will send a WhatsApp group link. So kindly must join that WhatsApp group whenever he whenever he sends you. Okay, the admin guy must join. I'll provide you more resources and this these files on the WhatsApp group. Okay, now next thing. So these are the numbers. These are the numbers, and this is a little SOFP is also given. See, this is this is thirty first December zero six SOFP. Okay. And this is thirty first December zero seven SOFP, right? Last year the inventories was twenty two four hundred. Now it went down. Inventories went down. Inventories went went down. Maybe 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 that Silva took some inventory with her. That Silva took some inventory with her. Then fourteen six hundred was the last year cash, and this year cash was thirty one four hundred. Fourteen six hundred was the last year cash, and this year cash was thirty one four hundred. Can any anybody tell me how much cash increase? How much cash increase? How much cash increase? Sixteen eight hundred, sixteen eight hundred, or around seventeen million. Seventeen million, seventeen million cash went up. Cash went up by seventeen million, sixteen thousand eight hundred, or you can call it seventeen million. Now listen, listen the issue. You remember, you remember the first line. Uh, in the first line, we did that. We sold, we sold the Silva for forty-two million dollars. We sold the running business of Silva for forty-two million dollars. That means, that means forty-two million dollars came to us. Forty-two million dollars came to us. Came to parent company. So there should be, there must be an increase of forty-two million in the cash. There must be an increase of forty-two million in the cash. Forty-two million in the cash. But the increment is only seventeen million. Increment is only seventeen million. Increment is only seventeen million. So where the remaining cash gone? I repeat. I repeat. I repeat. I repeat. I repeat. Last year cash was fourteen hundred fourteen thousand six hundred. This year, this year, this year cash was this year cash was. This year cash was thirty one four hundred. Okay, so cash increased by almost seventeen million, seventeen million. But it should have been increased by more, because on the first day of this accounting period, we sold a big giant giant company. Parent company sold a big giant company and received forty two million cash. So this increment should have been forty two million dollars. But this is only seventeen million dollars. That means look at here, parent company did some spending. 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 Okay, are you getting what spending? Giving you some 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 chunks. See, last year non-current liabilities was sixty-one thousand, and this year forty-two thousand. Last year the non-current liabilities was sixty-one thousand, and this year forty-two thousand. So we the non-current liabilities almost decreased by I think nineteen million. Sixty-one minus forty-two is nineteen million. So there is a possibility. Just hope you remember my dialogues. In ratio analysis, we have to use maybe, 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 possible, possible, possible. There is a possibility that some of the cash. the sum of the cash we received we received from the disposal of that company we we used that we used that cash to repay the loan 
we use that cash to repay the loan we use that cash to repay the loan okay are you getting are you getting this may be the reason this may be the reason yes we received 42 million dollars look at here we received we received 42 million dollars can you see this number we received 42 million dollars so our cash must have been increased by 42 million but the cash only increased but the cash only increased by 17 million but the cash only increased by how much 17 million 17 million so this is something this is something un unacceptable where the cash went where the cash went so the answer is answer is maybe we have used some cash to repay the loan one more thing now i'm going to discuss something new you have studied first time in your life you are going to study first time in the life it comes this thing what i'm what i'm going to speak this comes in sbr paper routine routine so don't but don't need to worry about it and even in the examiner report examiner has written that if you want to discuss this point you can this is an additional point this is an additional point extra point okay you know before disposal before one day before disposal just think one day before disposal silva was our subsidiary look at the video one day before disposal silva was our subsidiary and subsidiary means adding together subsidiary means adding together that means was subs that subsidiary was stick to us that subsidiary was stick to us everything cash inventory receivable payable everything of that sub subsidiary was stick to us the next day when we sold the next day the next day when we sold look at here the next day when we sold the running business the next day when we sold the running business everything of that company went down went down everything of that company was removed from us was removed from us so there is a possibility that 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 company was cash rich there is a possibility that silva has had its own cash reserves so when we sold silva we that cash reserves also gone when we sold that silva that cash also gone that's why the pure 42 million effect we can't see that's why the pure 42 million dollars effect we can't see yes it's a technical point i repeat there is a possibility that when we sold the running business of silva we sold everything that everything went gone went out went out so that means the cash balances of Silva also gone from us. So there is a possibility that Silva had big cash balance. Silva had big cash balance. And because we sold the running business of Silva, that cash balance also gone. That's why our cash didn't improve. That's why our cash did not improve by $42 million straight away. Because we received, we received $42 million from the sale. We received $42 million from the sale. I hope you got it. And if we, if you don't go, get it, don't worry. Even the examiner, even the examiner has written in its comments and that this is a technical point. This is a technical point. Okay. Right now, the next thing, the accounting, the accountant, the accountant assistant, accounting assistant has not accounted for Silva. See this. The accounting, the accounting assistant has not accounted for Silva as a discontinued operation because the disposal occurred on 1st January X7. So no figures from Silva have been included in 2007 financial statement extracts above. Now, look at here. Look at here. The accountant, uh, accounting assistant is saying that obviously the, obviously, it was sold on the first day. Obviously, we have sold the running business on the first day. So there was no there was no income related. There, there will be no income, no sales, no cost of sale, no GP, no other expenses related to this Silva. So that's why there is nothing to report. There is nothing to report, nothing to report about Silva. That's why we didn't do discontinued operation accounting. But one thing I would like to add that this event, I even I, I told this in the beginning, this event qualified for discontinued operation accounting. Yes, this event qualified for discontinued operation accounting. 
because we sold a separate major line of business we sold a separate major line of business we sold a separate major line of business so this event this event qualifies this event qualifies for this event qualifies for discontinued operation accounting okay now no figures from silva have been included in 2007 financial statement extracts above obviously because we sold on the first day the proceeds from the disposal have been the proceeds from the disposal have been recorded in cash with all net assets and goodwill de recognized obviously obviously we obviously we de recognize or everything when we sell the subsidiary we de recognize the balancing figure was held in a suspense account wait let me write something time waste it's nothing this question is not about suspense account so don't worry about it no you will you won't get a 0.5 mark even for this this is not about suspense account leave it leave it okay so now read the requirement 2 and sorry read the point number 2 and 3 i'm because of azan i'm just one minute i'm not i'm not saying anything you read this read this read this point 1 2 and 3 and also join the whatsapp group Read these lines, please. okay listen now point number 2 pinardi a company acquired 100% of silva company on 1st january x1 now this is about the history this is about the history that we we bought it around 6 7 years before we bought this company 6 7 years before and you know this much consolidation when we buy running business we pay goodwill we pay goodwill and the goodwill was at that time the goodwill was 6 million at that time the goodwill was 6 million the goodwill was 6 million at that time at the rate of acquisition the goodwill had been impaired by 30% in 2005 that means in between in previous years in previous years goodwill was impaired by 30% okay so can come on use your calculator be active 6 million means 6000 6 million means 6000 was the original goodwill 30% has already been impaired So six thousand less thirteen percent is eighteen hundred. Six thousand less thirty thirty percent is eighteen hundred. Now what is the remaining amount is left? Forty two hundred. So what is the goodwill? All of you, all of you, the champions of consolidation. What is the goodwill at disposal date? What is the goodwill at disposal date? It's forty two hundred. Sir, why you are asking this at disposal date? Why you are emphasizing the disposal date? Because, because. we need to compute gain or loss on disposal of this subsidiary we need to calculate the gain or loss on disposal of this subsidiary gain or loss on disposal of this subsidiary gain or loss on disposal of this subsidiary gain or loss of the or disposal of this subsidiary and you know for 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 consolidated gain or loss on disposal you need everything you need all data all data for disposal date you need all data for that subsidiary at disposal date at disposal date hope you remember the lecture hope you remember the lecture right now the net assets yes this is the net assets at 1st january 
This is the disposal date worth thirty-five million. The net assets of Silva C. The net assets of Silva at at first January X seven worth thirty-five million. Now just wait and let's eat something, some free marks. Let's eat some practical free marks. Let's enjoy some practical free marks. Okay, wait. What they are asking? See the requirement number one. Requirement number one. Yes, it's two marks, but very easy marks. Very easy marks. Calculate the gain on disposal of Silva Company that would need to be included in the consolidated profit or loss for the Pinardi Group for the year ended thirty first December X seven. For the year ended thirty first December X seven. Okay, so we need to calculate gain or loss on disposal. Now wait. Remember. For gain or loss on disposal, we must have knowledge of NCI as well. NCI is there any NCI? Is there any NCI? Let's check. Is there any NCI? No, 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 no. Because we acquired hundred percent, so more easy, more, very, very easy, very, very easy. Okay, so there is no NCI. Just you have the proceeds. What is the proceeds? Forty. What is the proceed weight? It's forty-two million. Forty-two million is the proceed. Forty-two million is the proceed, and see the remaining. Calculate it. Calculate it. Come on, calculate it. Come on, calculate it. Come on, calculate it. Yes, majority are correct. Students, please calculate the gain or loss. Gain and gain on disposal. Gain on disposal. Correct. Quick, do it! Quick, do it! It's two marks, only two marks. Excellent, excellent. Let me do it for you. First of all, gain or loss on disposal. This is requirement A. Requirement A. Requirement A. Proceeds was forty two thousand. Proceeds was forty two thousand. Okay. Now. Fair value of net assets of S company at disposal date. Don't forget, you have to use the data at disposal date. These are the examiner comments. You guys don't use a disposal date data. You guys don't use disposal date data. That's why you do mistakes. You are computing gain on disposal date. So this was thirty-five million. That is that is thirty-five thousand. Okay. Now less goodwill at. Goodwill at disposal date. First, you need to calculate goodwill at disposal date. What was the original goodwill, my my dear students, my dear respected students? The original goodwill was six thousand. The original goodwill was six thousand, but it was impaired. It was impaired by thirty percent in between in between the journey. So now, at disposal date, this was only forty two hundred. At disposal date, this is only forty two hundred. So now let's subtract these two. Let's sub subtract these two, and everything is hundred percent now. Everything is hundred percent now. Everything is hundred percent now. So no, no NCI. This is also hundred percent, and this is also hundred percent. So exact gain you will get twenty eight hundred is the gain on disposal. Twenty eight hundred is the gain. On disposal, twenty-eight hundred is the gain on disposal. You scored two easy marks. You scored two easy marks for this. You scored two easy marks for this. You scored two easy marks for this. Even those who really studied, those who really took the classes, or those who really worked hard, they know. With NCI, the calculation is little bit technical. With NCI, the calculation is little bit technical. There is no NCI in this case, so simply you need to calculate. You just sold the running business, and you compute the gain on disposal. You compute the gain on disposal. You compute the gain on disposal. Okay, but the major thing is use each and every data. Use each and every data of disposal date. Use each and every data of disposal date. Okay. One thing I would like to clarify, uh, this is very, this is a fact that you are in revision days, so you must know the basic things. Please, you must have studied the normal course or basic things. Okay, you are not studying first time. And no need to copy. I'll share the slides with you on the WhatsApp group. No need to copy, please. Now, the second requirement is again easy. The second requirement. 
is again easy. Yes, it is related to IFRS 5. It is related to IFRS 5. IFRS 5. There are two names, two separate names of IFRS 5. One is held for sale, non-current asset held for sale, and the another one is discontinued operation. Okay. Held for sale is about SOFP. Held for sale is about SOFP because it's related to current and non-current thing. Current and non-current, which is SOFP thing. But discontinued operation is the presentation of income statement. Discontinued operation is the presentation of income statement. Discontinued operation is the presentation of income statement. Is the presentation of income statement. Please be careful, okay? Now, so discontinued operation. First of all, let's, let's make some mind. For example, I have 100 shops. I have 100 shops. And today I just sold one shop, one shop. So this is very immaterial, which is immaterial. So it's not, now I should not tease. Now, now I should not disturb. I should not tease my shareholders by, by reporting this as a discontinued operation because out of 100 shops, I just sold one immaterial shop. So th this, is, this won't affect their decisions, okay? So, but if I sell a material segment, if I sold a material segment or you hope you remember a separate major line of business, a separate major line of business, like I used to have three products, shampoo, toothpaste, shampoo, toothpaste, and soap, shampoo, toothpaste, and soap. And I sold the running business of shampoo. So yes, I sold complete major line of business. Okay. Or think it geographically, think it geographically. I had one product. I had, I, I, I deal in only one product, but, but I used to work in three different markets like Pakistan, India, and Turkey, Pakistan, India, and Turkey. Now I'm withdrawing myself from Turkey. I'm, I'm closing down all operations of Turkey. I am closing down all operations of Turkey. So that means now I should inform my shareholders that we, that, that from next year, there will, there won't, there won't be any revenue from Turkey. There won't be any profits from Turkey, right? Okay. So my dear student, it should be a major separate line of business. You are getting. So this question, this question is about IFRS 5, the second part, discontinued operation. See, explain whether or not disposal of Silva is likely to constitute a discontinued operation and the correct accounting treatment for this. Correct accounting treatment for this. Okay. Yes, we should say that this uh, in the in the beginning of the question they they openly said that they are going to withdraw themselves from jewelry sector they are going to withdraw themselves from jewelry sector so jewelry is a separate line of business plus they receive 42 million dollars they receive 42 million dollars which looks some material amount if you see the balance sheet you guys are no more kids now 42 million dollars is good amount for this company $42 million. That means it's a material transaction. It's a material transaction. So yes, you should report this as discontinued operation as discontinued operation. But yes, this is the fact that in this accounting period, 2007, because it is sold in 2007, it is disposed of in 2007. So in, two, in 2007, it's a discontinued operation. In 2007, it's a discontinued operation. And hope you remember the definition of discontinued operation, the operation that has been sold, the operation that has been sold. So yes, it is sold. Yes, it is sold. So it is a, it should be classified as discontinued operation. But the problem is it is sold on the first day. It is sold on the first day. So there is no more sales, cost of sale, GP, other expenses, other income related to this, this segment. Otherwise, Otherwise, it would be reported in, in a separate line, profit and loss from discontinued operation. But yes, there is one thing. There is one thing related to this operation and that is gain on disposal. There is one thing, there is one thing, there is one thing related to this operation that is gain on disposal. So, you know, every, each and everything, open your ears, each and everything related, each and everything related to that segment, each and everything related to that segment, we have to report in the separate line. That is profit and loss from discontinued operation. 
continuing operations are separate discontinued operation is a separate line okay so in 2007 we should report this 2.8 million gain on disposal as a separate as a separate line in the on the face of the income statement with the heading of profit and loss from discontinued operation now one more thing only few students know this only few students the comparative thing you know the comparative 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 when we report when we when we showed data of 2007 to shareholders when we show data of 2007 to shareholders we have to we have to show comparative numbers as well we have to show comparative numbers as well and please i request if you don't it would if you don't believe you can check my notes my class notes my pdf files i have written it with my own hand my handwriting is there that if a segment if a segment or division is classified as discontinued operation in the current year if a segment is classified as discontinued operation in the current year it must be qualified it must be it must be qualified as a discount it must be reported as a discontinued operation in the comparatives of last year in the comparatives of last year so that shareholder shareholder will have good information shareholder will have good information to take decision that whether the company has taken the right step or wrong whether the company has taken the right step or wrong i'm sure you know this so these three marks it's a quality discussion it's a quality quality discussion of ifrs 5 ifrs 5 ifrs 5 okay now check it out check it out check it out i have written something I have written something for you guys. Please check. Please check. Please read it and read it with confidence. Read it with confidence. Silva company likely to meet. Now, now try to understand the language also. Don't Try to give the exact word, likely, more likely, possible, possibly, like, because jewelry is a separate major line of business which has been disposed of during the year. As it is a discontinued operation, it results would be removed from normal. This is the normal treatment. See, this is going to be the normal treatment. Remove from normal, from normal continuing operation and would be presented separately with the heading of profit or loss from discontinued operation profit or loss from discontinued operation i hope i hope you remember this the separate line in the on the face of the income statement profit or loss from discontinued operation profit or loss from discontinued operation profit or loss from discontinued operation okay together with the gain gain on disposal of 2.8 million yes this 2.8 million will be reported separately will this 2.8 million will be reported separately as silva was sold on 1st january x7 the first day think over it the first day of your accounting period the first day of your accounting period so there are no operating results in the current year there are no sales there are no cost of sales nothing will be added nothing will be added in this year of silva in this 2007 year of silva because silva is gone Selva, Selva has gone on the first day. Selva has gone on the first day. Now, however, the results of 2006 must be shown as a discontinued operation for comparative purpose. For comparative for purpose only, those students who have studied this standard, they know this. They know this, that we have to do it in the last year. We have to, we have to do it in the last year comparatives as well. Okay, so this is the three three marks requirement. Again, it is related to IFRS five. We haven't started ratios yet. We haven't decided started ratios yet. Okay, so just see the taste of examiner. Don't expect that you will get complete twenty marks on ratios. No, because there is a big course. So, in one question, I will show you the final account. In this, I will teach you final account today. Final account. They have tested twenty marks final account. And with 20 from Mark's final account, they are something related to consolidated disposal. And then they then they tested, then they tested the ratios thing. Then they tested the ratios thing. Okay. Now let me move the screen. 
let me move the screen. Let's read something. Okay, okay, okay. Point number three. We were on point number three. We were on point number three. Now be careful. We have two accounting periods in this question. First is 2006 and the second is 2007. The last year was 2006. This year is 2007. We sold, we sold the subsidiary on the first day of current year. Okay, Silva. Now, as part, as part of the sales agreement, the Penardi group will receive an annual fee of 2 million for the use of the Silva company brand. Now, you know, with sale, with sale, we, we receive some future, future, future income because we have, we have sold a, we have sold an outclass business. We have sold a Silva business. There's something very good in, related to that business. So on the sale, we, we put one condition on the buyer at the at the time of sale of Silva, we 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 put some condition on the buyer that each and every year and for next three years, you have to pay us two million. You have to pay us two million for the use of our, our this brand, for the use of this special brand. Okay. Now the 2000 annual fee has been included in Penardi Group revenue for the year ended 31st December X7. Now see this two million, this two million we have included here. This 2 million we have included. This is included here. This 2 million is included here. This 2 million is included here. So now some extra commentary, some extra commentary, not for everybody. Even the in the examiner report, they have said this is extra commentary. Those who want to do pure comparison like with like, those who want to compare like with like thing, like with like thing. So what I did, I removed, see in the last year, in the last year, this 122,400, I removed 36,000. So this makes 86,400. This makes 86,400 and 86,400 means pure A and B, no more Silva. 86,400 means pure A and B, no more Silva. So when you remove, when you remove Silva's revenue in the last year, so you should remove you should remove Silva revenue from current year. So in, in this 98, 300, 2 million is still related to Silva. In this 98, 300, 2 million means 2000. 2 million means 2000 still related to Silva. So if you remove this Silva from 2007, so the answer will be 96, 300. 96, 300. Now wait. Now can you compare? Now, can you compare 86,400 with 96,300? 86,400 with, so it will be around 10 million. It will be around 10 million. It will be around 10 million. So if you do pure like with like comparison with last year and this year, if you do pure like with like comparison of last year and this year, so removing Silva, removing, removing Silva. So there is a pure increase of 10 million in the revenue, which is not bad. There is a pure increase of 10 million in the revenue, which is not bad. That means our existing sectors are also good. That means our existing sector, that means our existing sector is also good. Now, one question raised, one question raised. Sir, this should be, uh, this is like uh, what we call it, royalty. This is like royalty. We are receiving royalty. So search, this should be included in other income. This should be included in other income. Yes, there is a possibility, but the question has already been solved by the examiner. The question has already been solved by the examiner. So we just need to comment on it. We just need to comment on it that uh, whether we have to include Silva's or not. And what about with Silva's comparison and what about without Silva's comparison? So if, if we we have to remove it, we are just we we just want to remove Silva for a while. We just want to remove Silva for a while. So to see, to check, to see, to check the pure performance of our existing sectors, of our existing sectors, of our existing sectors. Okay. Now, please. 
This is Silva's single company's individual company's financial statement. This is Silva's individual company's income statement last year. This is Silva's individual company's income statement last year and current year. Okay. Now, prior to the disposal of Silva, prior to the disposal of Silva, Silva company used uh, used to use some property belonging to Pinardi Group. Now, you know, previously we were the parent. Previously, we were the parent company. We were the parent company of Silva. So we had given some of our properties. Okay, use it. Some of our property, we allowed them to use our properties. Okay. Now, following the disposal, Penardi Group moved its cosmetic division into this property. This is a very good move. Now, what happened? When previously Silva was our subsidiary. So we used to do favors. We used to do favors with Silva and we allowed, we, were, we allowed them in our property. Okay, use our premises. But now Silva is no more. Silva is gone. They are not part of our group. So now we said, please leave the premises. Please, please leave the premises. And we moved our cosmetic business here and see, now see the data, see the data. Previously, the cosmetic division had leased external facilities for 2.5 million. Just think, we were paying 2.5 million for that cosmetic division. This is a positive point. At 1st January X7, the lease had 10 years remaining, 10 years remaining for that cosmetic lease. To exit the lease, Penardi Group made a one-off payment of 3 million to the lessor and recorded it as an operating expenses. It's like, it's like, wait. It's like redemption, redemption penalties, redemption penalties or early redemption pen penalties. You know, I'm sure those who have studied F9, FM, FM paper, those who have studied FM paper, they know very well about these redemption penalties, early redemption penalties. What is early redemption penalties? If you have taken loan from a bank for 20 years and initially you promise bank to repay loan after 20 years easy 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 with interest but suddenly after two years said you you said okay take the loan back so the bank bank will be angry with you bank will say why you are returning early because bank was expecting a big interest 20 years interest and now you are giving only two years now you are giving only two years interest so the bank would be angry bank would be angry so that's why they put early redemption penalties so th see this is the one-off hit this is the 3 million one of it, but it's good for our long term. It's good for our long term students don't sleep. It's good for our long term because we, we don't need to pay now 2.5 million every year for next 10 years. We don't need to pay 2.5 million for next 10 years, 2.5 million per year for next 10 years. It's a very good thing. And you know, this 2.5 million is a sort of fixed cost. It's a sort of fixed cost every year. And I'm sure you are well aware of this fam famous dialogue. I'm sure you guys are well aware of this famous dialogue. Fixed cost increases the risk of owner. Fixed cost increases the risk of owner. Fixed cost increases the risk of owner. So thank God because of this disposal of Silva. Now we are, we are on our own premises. We are on our own premises. We don't need any rented or leased premises. We have our own premises. So that's good. This is a positive move. You need to highlight this. Even in the conclusion side, we need to highlight this. Okay. This is towards the betterment of the company. Now, the next thing is related to IAS 21. Next thing is related to IAS 21. The Penardi group acquires raw material from overseas. Okay. So when you buy from overseas, so there is a risk which we call exchange gain or loss risk, exchange rate risk, exchange rate risk. I'm sure you all have done this standard. In 2006, the group, in 2006, the group recorded a foreign exchange gain. Last year, it was a gain. And in 2007, group made a foreign exchange loss. Both items were recognized in operating expenses. You know, this thing you can highlight that last year there was a gain and this year it is a loss. So this year your operating expenses would be higher because of this. There will be a operating expenses will be a little higher because of this, because of this, right? Because this time there is no gain. It's a loss. It's a loss. It's a loss. Okay. And this thing clearly, clearly identifies 
that company has some foreign exchange risk as well this company is risky this company is risky because they they are dealing in foreign exchange they are dealing in foreign exchange they have some foreign exchange connection so this is a riskier point from that company point of view now again easy marks get ready get ready get ready to grab get ready to grab c point number c just read it and enjoy read it calculate the following ratio using pre formatted table for the pinardi group for 2007 and 2006 simply you have to calculate these four numbers and they have not indicated any any they have not said to adjust anything no need to adjust just pinardi group means consolidated pinardi group means just go to the consolidated income statement just go to the consolidated income statement and start calculating these four start calculating these four okay and using pre formatted table if you if you see this question on the acc software they will give you they will give you a proper boxes for this they will give you proper proper boxes for this okay for special this requirement this requirement will have the special section otherwise with the commentary you have to write in the word the commentary you have to write in the word okay right so you have to calculate these four now uh, you will say sir where where is the data now let me show you the data and i would suggest you i would advise you to take the picture of that and then we we all will calculate no need to waste time on this this easy requirement no need to waste come on see this this is the data wait let me clean it for you okay this is the data this is the data can you see take the picture we have we don't have to do any adjustment right now just we have to calculate simple ratios they in the requirement they have not indicated anything they have not indicated they are they just requested you to calculate they just requested us to calculate they just requested us to calculate the four ratios better take the pick and start yourself start yourself all of you take the picture and start the ratios start the ratios okay please i'm moving the screen okay the first thing is gp margin the first thing i have the question paper with me you have the picture you have the picture okay so the first thing is gp margin gp margin what is the gp of 2007 is 50000 700 divided by 98 300 times 100 which is okay and for 2006 you have the number you you just took the pick 50600 divided by 12400 times 100 so it will be okay now operating margin operating profit margin is operating profit divided by sales operating profit divided by sales into 100 okay operating profit is is pbit pbit okay so this will be see this 17000 divided by 98 300 times 100 which will give you 17.3% okay now the next is 13000 next year now interest cover interest cover means interest cover shows interest paying ability of the company interest cover shows the interest paying ability of a company okay so what's the formula the formula is pbit divided by interest expense pbit pbit which is 
you have the picture i told you to take the pic of the question i told all of you to take the pic better you took it divide by interest expense here is 3200 so the answer will come in times times it is 5.3 times now what about this year it's 13200 divided by 5500 so this will be 2.4 times so yes this ratio shows the improvement see last year the ability was less now more ability interest cover the higher the interest cover the better it is the higher the interest cover the better it is now we have good interest paying ability we have good interest paying ability good interest paying ability okay now inventory turnover in days inventory turnover in days what is the formula closing stock divided by cost of sales closing stock divided by cost of sales into 365 closing stock divided by cost of sales into 365 so what is the closing stock go and check it was 13300 divided by cost of sales is 47600 times 365 so this will be how many days 102 days okay and this year if we check it will be double to 400 closing stock is double to 400 cost of sales is 71 800 times 365 this will be 114 days 114 days 114 days okay You got it. These are the four marks, very plain marks. Total, the most easiest marks of this question were this requirement A and C. Yes, for B, everybody can't write on IES, IFRS, but for A and C, are scoring. A and C are scoring. A and C are scoring marks. A and C are scoring marks. Did you understand this part? This, did you definitely, definitely understand this part? Please write on the chat box. Okay. Now, let's read the last requirement first. First, you can write, wait, one question. If you want to round off, you can round off till two or one decimal places. It's not a big issue. It's not a big issue because this will be, this thing relates to last 40 marks, last 40 marks. It's not an MCQ. Now, so this is, listen something. Can anybody tell me what is the interest, why the interest cover is increasing? Interest cover previously it was 2.4 times. Now it's 5.3 times. It's good. Your interest paying ability is increasing. Interest paying ability is increasing. Now basic mathematical commentary. Listen the maths maths commentary. You know why? You know why this is increasing? Because the numerator is going up. Numerator is going up. That means your profitability is going up. That's why your ability is improving. And your denominator, your denominator, the interest cost is going down. Your denominator is going down. So your numerator is going up, which is good for any number. And denominator is going down, which is also good, which is also good for the final answer. So your profitability is going up and the finance cost is going down. That's why your interest paying ability is improving. Now, one last question. Why? Open your eyes and think over it. Open your ears, think over it. Use your brain. You know why your finance cost is decreasing? Why your finance cost is decreasing? Because your non-current liabilities went down. Your non-current liabilities went down. And you know one of the reason, one of the reason why your non-current liabilities went down. One of the reason why your non-current liabilities went down. Very good. Lease. Because you broke one lease. You just threw away one lease. You just cancelled one lease. And that was a 10-year lease. 10 years remaining. That 
in that least 10 years was remaining 10 years means there was a there would be a big big proportion there would be a big 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 proportion of non current liabilities there would be a big proportion of non current liability in that lease and that lease ran away ran away so there is one 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 point was this also one point was this also okay now some commentary we can do with just discussion can you see the gp margin last year it was 41.3 this year it is 51.6 so you would say that the gp margin improved gp margin improved so it's good it's good we we sold we sold that we sold that bad sheep we sold that bad sheep but one thing one thing as a student you can think sir in the last year numbers 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 silva's data was also included but this year number silva is not included in the last year numbers silva's data was included and this year is not included so looks like this comparison is not like with like this comparison is not like with like so wait look at here let's calculate the separate gp margin of last year let's calculate let's calculate the separate gp margin of silva all of you look at here see this this is the gp this is the sales this is the gp this is the sorry 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 this is the gp 12600 is the gp and 36000 is the sale 12600 is the gp and 36000 is the sales how much is the separate gp margin how much is the separate gp margin of silva last year 35% c separate gp margin of silva is 35% i am i hope i pray that you understand maths separate gp margin of silva was 35% open your eyes and 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 gp margin combined with other three gp margin combined with the other other members is 41.3 that means the other members were more powerful this was weak silva was weak it's about average my dear separate gp margin separate gp margin of silva was 35% and the gp margin of silva combined with other members is 41.3% that means the other members are are were more rich the other members were more strong and silva was poor silva was not good okay so this is a positive point for our existing products and this and it looks like it feels like that was this was the good decision of pinardi group it feels like this is the good decision of pinardi group to dispose of that company because that company's gp margin was not good as compared to the existing divisions this is the evidence this is the evidence i hope you this thing clicked in your mind i'm explaining again but you you should go you all should go to school now because when you were in grade 6 7 you didn't study maths and you know this maths won't leave you till grave write it somewhere maths won't leave you till grave till grave this is the game of till old age till old age you have to cry during shopping you have to cry you during pension you have to cry during taxation you have to cry maths maths is maths maths is maths wait let me give you some example i'll give you just think just think i earn 100 million dollars let us say and my brother earns 60 million dollars i earn 100 million dollar and my brother earns 60 million if we take average of our two the average will come out 80 million dollars 
I earn hundred, my brother earns sixty million. If we take out average, the average will be eighty. Okay. So the combined result is eighty. The combined result is eighty of V two, and the my poor brother result is sixty. So that means I am rich. I am rich, and because of the because of this average, because I am rich man and I added my result with a poor man, overall my result also went down. Did you understand now? That Silva separate result, Silva separate result was thirty five percent, and Silva result combined with this group is forty one point three percent. That means the other members were more powerful, and this this naughty, sorry, this naughty Silva made the average down for everybody. Now you got it. Because I taught three to four years maths in my life, four years or five years. I I I was a maths teacher previously. Previously, I was a maths teacher. Okay, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. It's good. It's good. It's good. You are asking now, but we have we have limited time, my dear student. We have limited time. So this thing, this thing is good now. Now. last year your operating margin was 10.8% last year was your operating margin was 10.8 and this time 717.3 wait gp margin in absolute terms it's increased by 10% see 41 and 51 41 and 51 in absolute terms it's it's increased by 10% and operating margin in absolute terms it increased by 6% something Six or six point five percent, six or six point five percent or seven percent. So, yes, GP margin. Sorry, yes, operating margin also followed the footsteps, footprints of GP margin. And you know this. This is very old and routine commentary. Whatever effects comes on GP, it comes on. It comes on operating profit, right? So, operating profit margin followed it. Operating for profit margin followed it. But the numbers are not. but the numbers are not exact same that that the first number gp margin increased by increased by 10% and the second is 6.8 or 7% okay so there is a possibility listen listen easy easy because there was some one off there was some one off expense in, expenses in the current year there was some one of expenses in the current year there was some one ex one of expenses remember the 3 million penalty the 3 million penalty was the one of one of one of hit in the current year this may be the reason second reason there was some there was some uh, foreign exchange loss previously last year it was foreign exchange gain this year it was foreign exchange loss previously it was foreign exchange gain this year it was foreign exchange loss and that foreign exchange loss also hit your operating expenses also hit your operating expenses okay so these points you can highlight these points you can highlight okay now it's better we read the requirement and now only you need confidence only you need you have done major thing just confidence is needed okay analyze the performance and position for the penardi group for the year ended 31st december x7 compared to the year ended 31st december x6 11 marks 11 marks if you get 6 marks still it's good if you get 6 or 5 marks still not bad because you scored good in other requirements the practical calculation and the part 1 your first target is to cross the border 50 marks this is that's it 50 marks and you will be entered in the firm that's it because there is a shortage of accountants now especially in the subcontinent especially in the subcontinent people are going to the west lot of people so just score 50 and you will get the job now first of all my dear student i have in the beginning of the question i invested time for this thing see the revenue in absolute terms revenue increased by 24.1 24.1 million sorry the revenue decreased by 24.1 but this comparison is not like with like because last year silva was included this year it is not last year silva was included this year it is not 
so when you when you remove this silva then the comparison will give you 12 million increase then this comparison will give you 12 million increase 12 million increase so this is the major this shows this shows that our existing products the cosmetic division and the other division is good this shows our cosmetic and other division was good the cosmetic and the other division was good so nothing to worry about okay and one extra commentary i showed you this this commentary if somebody wants to include this then the absolute amount of increase is 10 million then the absolute amount of increase of the other products was 10 million was 10 million okay so in the requirement examiner asked two things one to discuss about the performance you know what is performance is always for the year performance is always for the year so for performance you need to discuss income statement and income statement ratios income statement things and income statement ratios like sales like you need to discuss gp margin operating profit margin interest cover these these are these are performance and for position means statement of financial position like sofp sofp so for sofp the gearing ratio gearing ratio is for sofp and your what inventory turnover receivable days these all are these all are these all are position these are position ratios okay so in the performance you need to discuss income statement numbers in position you need to discuss sofp numbers okay so let me let me take you let, let me take you to the discussion part let me take you to the discussion part i'll discuss the conclusion don't worry don't worry dear student now the first heading the first heading i have given the first heading i have given is performance because examiner asked you two things examiner asked you two things examiner asked you two things okay the first thing is performance and the second thing is position so performance and in performance i have also given headings i have also given headings you know it's better whenever you need to write the theory start follow this pattern heading sentence heading then some discussion heading then some discussion in this way it would be easier for marker to give you marks it would be easier for marker to give you marks and your objective is to score marks right now this is the only objective okay so now simple look at here and i don't want to waste time in typing right now because my objective is to make you understand the real thing is understanding okay now revenue down by simple english simple words no more extra down by 24 million hope you remember the first shot which may be due to the disposal of silva yes previously this silva was with us now it's not with us so the drop out is natural which is in 2006 results but did not contribute in 2007 silva was part in uh, was part of the group in 2006 not in 2007 so this drop was natural obviously also this comparison is not like with like see immediately immediately you 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 pointed out this thing the major thing to make comparison correct to make comparison correct remember i did something some engineering i did some engineering with the income statement i did some engineering with income statement remember to make comparison correct we should remove 36 million revenue from 2006 results so now there is an increase of 12 million there is an increase of how much 12 million from fragrance and cosmetic which is good now i have used this red pen this red pen is extra extra this is extra this is extra point this red point pen is extra point okay so those who want to write this it's okay and those who think this is difficult leave it leave it even the in the examiner report this this is in the heading of extra marks also 2 million revenues added in 2007 relating to the use of silva name silva name remember we were getting the royalty remember we were getting the royalty which should also be removed to make comparison like with like to make comparison like with like and if we remove this then the net increase is 10 million if we remove this then the net increase is 10 million 10 million dollars 10 million dollars read it read it slowly read it slowly no need to rush
okay now the next thing is now next heading is margins next heading is about margins 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 are gp margins and operating margin go easy go easy gp margin and operating margin yes i'll give you a break so after 10 minutes i'll give you a break second question we'll do we'll take a 5 minutes break okay please please and listen now these are your ending days even i am giving my time so you should also give don't worry don't worry gp margins up from 41 to 52 this what we observe this what we observe 41 to 52 in the normal but separate gp margin of silva in 2006 was only only 35% we all we all just calculated which means other segments were better than silva in terms of gp margin the mathematical fight the mathematical fight remember remember this point that means silva was poor the other members were rich the other members were rich we have done this point please accept it now now operating profit margin also increased also increased one reason was that carrot forward effect of gp margin this is simple and this is in my solutions of many questions i wrote this in my solutions of many question i wrote this whenever gp margin increases operating profit margin follows operating profit margin follows the gp margin operating profit margins follows the gp margin yes remember now operating expenses this from income statement we we took we took operating expenses decreased by 3.7 million we show we check check this in it some important factors for operating margins are there is one off exit fee there is one of exit fee of 3 million of 3 million to exit the lease included in operating expenses you know we could we could have seen listen my word we could have seen more more good effects in operating margin but just because of these one off hits but just because of these one off hits we didn't find the good result this time we didn't find a much better result okay because just think if these payments wouldn't be there we would be in a better position we would be in more better position now but as we have to bear this one off hit but yes this one off hit is again not again again not bad at all because after getting this 3 million hit we saved we saved 25 million over 10 years we saved 25 million over next 10 years remember the lease lease there is a one off exit fee of 3 million to exit the lease included in operating expenses but this would create a long term saving of 25 million over 10 years over 10 years i hope you remember shifting the properties shifting the properties also the foreign exchange gains and losses also part of operating expenses last year it was last year it was a loss but this year it's a foreign exchange gain this is also a reason of good operating margin this is also a reason last year this is also a reason sorry yes our original argument was that the gp margin increased by 10% but operating by 7 gp margin increased by 10 but operating by 7 operating margin didn't go with the same speed operating margin didn't go with the same speed because there were some one off hits because there were some one off hit and the two one off hits the two one off hits we just saw number 1 was 3 million number 1 was 3 3 3 million 3 million exit fee which is which we called uh, early redemption penalty and the second thing second 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 thing is the second thing is this time there is exchange loss last year it was also the wait 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 let me check last year it was again wait 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 wait
Yes, in 2006, it was a gain and now it's a loss. Correct, 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 correct. Now it's perfect. Now it's perfect. Now it's perfect. Now it, it was perfect. Last year it was a gain and this year it was a loss. Okay. Last year it was a gain and this year it was a loss. Now it's perfect. Now it's perfect and it matches this, right? Did you understand this? Did you understand till now? Please students, did you understand till now? Did you understand this point? Please respond on the chat box. Okay, now interest cover, interest cover, I just explained you during the, that thing. Interest cover means interest paying ability of the company. Interest cover means interest paying ability of the company, interest paying ability of the company. So, you know, interest in the formula of interest cover is PBIT divided by interest expense. So, you know why interest cover went up? Because our numerator went up, our numerator, the profitability went up and the finance cost went down, the denominator went down. So both of these events created a positive impact on interest cover. Both of these events created a positive impact on interest cover. And now can anybody tell me, I asked, I asked you previously and you, you guys gave me good response. Listen, why your finance cost went down? Why your finance cost went down? Because there was a decrease in non-current liabilities. We, we we just finished the lease. We just finished the lease, the exit of lease. The exit of lease was a positive point, okay? So read it. Increase from 2.4 to 5.3 times. Reason for this is increase in profits, increase in profits and decrease in finance costs. One reason for decrease in finance costs is the exit from the lease, exit from the lease, exit from the lease, okay? So this is how simply, this is how simply you need to discuss. This is simple way of discussing it. Simple way of discussing this topic. Simple way of this discussing this topic, right? Now the next thing is position. Position. For, from position point of view, go and check the SOFP. Go and check the SOFP. Now wait. As a student, you may ask, sir, can we calculate gearing, sir? Can we calculate, can we calculate gearing? Can we calculate gearing? No, you don't have data. If you took the pick of the question earlier, you don't have equity. You don't have equity, anything like that. So you are not able to calculate gearing. That's why I have also not calculated the gearing. Okay, now, but yes, the non-current liabilities went down by 21 million or something from 61 million to 42 non current liabilities non current liabilities went down from 61 to 42 61 to 42 so what were the what was the reasons what was the reasons for the decrease in non current liabilities what was the reasons for decrease in non current liabilities major three reasons major three reasons quick quick listen number 1 number 1 exit from the lease exit from the lease because the 10 years remaining life of the lease was was there so that is for sure some major major non-current liability element was there in the lease. So when we just canceled the lease, our non-current liabilities went down. First reason, first reason, second reason, second reason. There is a possibility. There is a possibility when we sold our subsidiary. There is a possibility when we sold our subsidiary, we got the cash. When we sold our subsidiary, we got the cash. We got the cash. So there is a possibility we pay, we, we repaid the loan, we repaid the loan. And yes, there is evidence, there is evidence. We got 42 million, we got 42 million cash from that subsidiary, from the disposal of subsidiary, but our cash balance is just increased by 17 million. Our cash balance is just increased by 17 million. So th there, this is an indication of repayment of loan. This is an indication of repayment of loan. I discussed this earlier. I discussed this earlier. Let me show you this. See this. See this, please. 
your non current liabilities previously was 61 to 42 your cash balance was 41 14 600 now it's 31 400 so your cash balance is increased by 17 17 million your cash balance is increased by 17 million but you receive 42 million you receive 42 and cash just increased by 17 so there is a possibility that you you use some of cash you use some of your cash in repaying your loan you use some of your cash in repaying your loan okay and one more thing see one possibility of reduction of ncl means non current liability was the exit of silva there is a possibility that Silva was highly geared. There is a possibility that Silva was highly geared. Sil Silva contained big liabilities. And now when we sold Silva, those liabilities gone. Those liabilities gone with Silva. So that's a good point. So that's why our non-current liability decreased. There is a possibility that Silva contained itself contained some non-current liabilities. And when you, when you sell out Silva, when you sold out Silva, so those liabilities also went out. So that's, that's why your non-current liabilities decrease. This is one of the reason. One possibility of the reduction of non-current liabilities was the exit of Silva from current year SOFP. Silva may have, may have, see, see the wordings, may have significant non-current liabilities which were removed when it was sold, which were removed when it was sold. So total three reasons. Total three reasons for the total three reasons for the decrease of non-current liabilities. Total three reasons for the decrease of non-current liabilities. Now, the last point: inventory days. Inventory days. I hope you I hope you saw the inventory days. Previously, it was one one four. Previously, inventory days was 114, a very high, and now 102. Previously, inventory days was 114, now 102. Although it, although it decreased a little bit, although it decreased a little bit, but still it is higher, 100 plus days. But again, I would say when I started this question, I started this question, my dear student, I say one thing that they deal in cosmetics and perfumes. They deal in cosmetic and perfume. So they don't, they are not dealing in perishable goods. They are not dealing in perishable goods. So this is not, this is not to worry about it. This is not to worry about it. This is not to worry about it. There is no need to worry about it because they are not dealing in perishable goods. So higher inventory days are still manageable, still manageable. Okay. Now, one reason, one reason for the decrease in inventory days may be that silva see silva left silva left this year and inventory days went down silva left this year and inventory days went down so that means silva's inventory days were much more higher silva's inventory days were much more higher that's why removal of silva made us look a bet made us look in a better position see Also, the reason for decrease in inventory days was the sale of Silva this year means Silva's product inventory days was higher. Okay. So that's why when we sold that, when we sold it, we, we are relaxed now. We are relaxed. Without Silva, we are better. Without Silva, our inventory days improved. I hope you can connect the dots. I hope you can connect the dots. Now in the end, what conclusion some points some points i have written looks more good selling silva results improved you know without silva our revenue is also improving without silva we you remember the comparison when we when we did comparison like with like of revenue when we did comparison like with like of revenue our results improved right so it's better without silva we are better concentrating on few things specialization that's very very good Previously, we had three, four businesses, but now we sold one business and now we are concentrating on few things. That's very good specialization. Specialization is very good thing. Specialization is very, very good thing. I'm sure you know about it.
okay cosmetic division utilizing group property no need of lease properties you remember when we when we kick when we sold silva then we then immediately we kicked them out from our properties and now we are using our cosmetic business we are using our own properties for cosmetic business so no need of lease properties so there is no fixed cost means there is a reduction in fixed cost and you know reduction is in fixed cost is always a good sign reduction in fixed cost is always a good sign so these are the possible conclusion you can write these are the possible conclusion my dear students you can write okay now i have last question and then i'll give you a break definitely we all need break did you understand 75 to 80% of this question please write on the chat box 75 to 80 i don't want 100% did you understand 75 to 80% of this question if yes then it's it's better it's better okay now let's take a 5 minutes break and then we'll move to the final account then we'll move to the final account then we'll move to the final account okay taking 5 minutes break 5 minutes enjoy welcome back welcome back students welcome back students now one question is left one question is left that is that is final account that is final account one question is left that is final account okay so let's move to the question let's move to the question this is the question the and this is very easy question if you know if you have some knowledge or normal knowledge of ifrs you can you can you can do good you can do good in this question okay now and if you have solved your kit if you have solved your kit all questions of exam kit definitely that is a must thing the following is an extract from the trial balance of mims company for the year ended 31st december x5 the first and the foremost thing the first and the foremost thing is the accounting period is the accounting period accounting period don't forget okay now revenue cost of sales admin distribution income tax on the debit side it means it means under provision income tax balance on the debit side is under provision is expense and over provision is income under provision is expense and over provision is income that goes on the credit side then you have defer tax liability opening then you have defer tax liability opening then you have some provision opening some provision definitely there wish, there should be a case or employees issue or some there is some opening provision as well you have retain earning opening as well equity share capital issued osc this is called osc ordinary share capital issued ordinary share capital again beginning again beginning student one thing should be very clear you have to put blood in it you need you need energy okay this is basically your past paper latest past paper latest trend latest fashion latest fashion latest question which came in the last attempt then you have intangible assets investment property finance cost investment income and suspense account this is just again time wasting time wasting suspense account time wasting let me write time wasting but still i'll give you a lecture on it in this in this but then i'll give you the exam technique that don't waste time in exam in exam you don't need to include suspense account in income statement or sofp in exam you don't need to include suspense account in income statement and sofp or soshi or soshi statement of tens and equity so if you see the marking scheme or examiner solution they don't even discuss this suspense account they don't even discuss they just solve the normal transaction and they make the statement they make the statement that's what their that's what their routine okay so be very be very active be very smart don't waste your precious time on any irrelevant thing now let's move note number 1 note number 1 is ias 8 note number 1 is related to ias 8 let me say the name changes in accounting policies changes in accounting estimates and prior period errors 
changes in accounting policies, changes in accounting estimates, and prior period errors. Hope you remember. So, you know, prior period errors, I'm talking about prior period errors. The, er the prior period errors are error which are done last year, but discovered this year. Error occurred last year, but discovered this year. So if they are material errors, if they are material errors, they should be ad adjusted retrospectively. They should be adjusted retrospectively and open your ears. Retrospective means adjusted in opening retain earning. Retrospective means adjusted in opening, 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 retain earning. Okay, let me try, let me try. MIMS. One more thing, you must have studied F3 or basics before for this F7, FR level. You must know FA, basic knowledge. One thing, if you want to write somewhere, write it. Closing stock has direct relationship with profit and opening stock, opening inventory has indirect relationship with profit. I repeat, closing stock has got direct, 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 direct relationship with profit. Closing stock has indirect relationship with profit. Sorry, opening stock has indirect relationship with profit. I am sure you know this. Now, MIMS company noted that MIMS company noted that there was an error in the inventory count on 31st December X4. Wait, 31st. This is our year end. 31st December X5 is the current year end. And 31st December X4 means last year end. Last year end. So there was an error in the inventory count at 31st December X4, meaning that the closing inventory balance, previous year closing inventory balance in 2004 financial statement was overstated by 0.7 million. No entries have yet been made to correct this error. Look at here. When, listen, when last year, Last year, closing stock was increased. Last year, closing stock was increased. When last year, closing stock was increased, so there is always a direct relationship of closing stock with profit. So that means last year, profit also increased. Last year, profit also increased. I repeat, when last year, closing stock increased, that means last year, profit, last year, profit, last year, profit also increased. And when last year profit increased, that means opening. That means this, 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 this retain earning also increased. This retain earning also increased. I repeat. When by error, last year closing stock increased. So closing stock has direct relationship with profit. That means last year profit also increased. Last year profit also increased. And when last year profit increases, that means profit enters in the retain earning. So your opening, so your opening retain earning also increased, increased because of this error. Your opening retain earning also increased because of this error. So now you need to correct it. Now you need to correct it. So let's, let's decrease. Let's decrease the opening retain earning. Let's decrease the opening retain earning by 0 0.7 million. 0 0.7 is basically 700. 0.7 million is 700. So let's write the, wait, let me see the question. It's in thousand, okay. So 0.7 million means 700. So retain earning debit 700. Now the second entry. Now just think, last year closing stock means this year opening stock. Last year closing stock means this year opening stock, opening stock. And just think, just think, when you increased, when you increased the opening stock last year, sorry, when you increase the opening stock of current year, so because of opening stock, cost of sales would have increased. Write the formula of cost of sales. All of you, please write the formula of cost of sales. The cost of sale formula is opening stock at purchases. Opening stock at purchases, less, less closing stock. So when your current year opening stock increased, when your current year opening stock increased, your current year cost of sales also increased your current year cost of sales also increased. So now you need to decrease in order to correct the error. Now you need to decrease the cost of sales. And whenever you decrease, whenever you decrease the cost of sales, you credit it. You credit it, okay? So two things you have to do. Two things you have to do. Number one, re reduce your opening retain earning by 700. Reduce your opening retain earning by 700 and reduce your cost of sales by 700. Now my strict words, there is no need to make this entry. There is zero marks to make this entry. 
those who hate entry there are a, there is a big crowd there is a big crowd who hate double entry there is a big crowd who hate double entry don't no need to make it just directly adjust in trial balance or directly do it in the income statement that's enough that's enough those who hate the double entry just leave it and you have what you have to do see this see this your retain cost of see this is cost of sale just reduce it by 700 this is retain earning also reduce it by 700 that's it that's it now how to post it how to post it cost of sales obviously i will make the income statement in front of you obviously i will make the income statement in front of you so uh, cost of sales thing i will adjust in income statement cost of sales thing i will adjust in income statement sir what about the opening retain earning what about the opening retain earning opening retain earning is a soshi 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 statement of change in equity thing so when i'll be making when i'll be making soshi first of all i'll adjust the prior period error in the first starting lines in the first starting lines i will be adjusting i will be adjusting this retain earning error i'll be adjusting this prior period error okay so just think over it think over it now think over it now this is the adjustment this is the entry those who love entry it's okay for them those who hate entry just don't even look at it those who hate double entry just don't even look at it examiner even didn't make this entry examiner even didn't make this entry no need to make this entry at all so because of prior period error you adjust the opening retain earning and second because your opening stock last year closing stock means this year opening stock so when this year opening stock is affected so obviously opening stock also affects the cost of sales opening stock also affect the cost of sales use your basic knowledge so you need to adjust you need to correct cost of sales and what i that's what i did read it and think it Now, next thing, the provision. Wait, first, let me show you. First, let me show you. And I would request take the picture of this thing. Take the picture of this trial balance so that you can see from in your phone, mobile phone. Take the picture. If you don't have this question, please take the picture. Take the picture. If you want to study effectively, take the picture. Okay. So tell me how much was the opening provision? 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 It was 4,600. At the beginning of the year, there was a provision of 4,600. What does it mean? Wait, 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 wait. Let me tell you the story. Let me tell you a very good story. See, our employees did case on us previously. Our employees did case on us previously previously just think just a story and you know our lawyer our, our lawyer advised us that yes it is probable that we'll lose the case we'll lose the case so we made a provision we made a provision of 40 how much 4600 correct we made provision was 4600 yes we made a provision of 4600 previously so in the opening in the opening balance sheet in the opening balance sheet, sorry, it was 31st December. What is the year end this time? Yes, sorry, X4. In the opening SOFP, there was a liability of 4,600. There was a liability, already a liability. There was already a liability of 4,600, okay? We were expecting that we had to pay. We were expecting that we had to pay. We had to pay. We had to pay 4,600. Now, the provision relates, the provision relates, please, please study with heart, study with heart for me, just for me, please. The provision relates to a court case in existence since December X4. It was a previous case. MIMS company settled this case on 31st December X5 for 6 million. See, we were expecting 4.6, but we had to pay 6. 
we were expecting 4.6 but we had to pay 6 so there is under provision have you ever heard about the word under provision we were expecting 4.6 but we had to pay 6 so there is some extra expense there is some extra bad news for us there is some extra bad news for us now the full see this the full amount was credited correctly to cash yes we paid the cash with a corresponding with a corresponding debit entry being made in the suspense account, being made in the suspense account. Okay, I'll teach you today suspense as well, but I will advise you in the end, no need to do this thing in front of examiner. In front of examiner, no need. First of all, tell me what was the balance of suspense account in the trial balance? What was the balance of suspense account in the trial balance? It was 46,500. All of you, you can see. The balance of suspense account in the trial balance was 46,500 credit. Okay. So let me make it. See this. Suspense account was 46,500 credit. Can you see? Suspense account opened on 46,500 credit. Okay. Now let us mm. let me teach you how to make the entries. How to make the entries. Please look at me. Just for our sake just for our understanding i am teaching you this otherwise otherwise i'll in the end i'll tell you what to do in exam obviously you paid cash you paid straight cash 6000 and the moment you paid cash the you moment you paid cash your all previous liability finished your all previous provision liability finished but tell me how much is the extra amount the extra amount is 1400 so this is the entry this entry you should have made this is the correct entry. This is the correct entry which you should have made. Cash credit 6,000, you paid cash. And because of paying 6,000, your all previous provision, opening provision liability finished. So 4,600 debit. And 1,400 was unexpected expense. 1,400 was unexpected expense. This is the correct entry. Now what this is stupid accountant, what this, this stupid accountant, all only credited the cash. This stupid accountant only credited the cash and forgot to debit anything. This this stupid accountant only credited the cash and forgot forgot to debit anything. Do you, do you think these two sides are same? Do you think these two sides are same? No. When the two sides are not same, then the trial balance is out. And whenever the trial balance is out, we open suspense account. And we open suspense account on the side where there is a deficiency. So suspense account because of this part opened on the debit side. Suspense account because of this part opened on the debit side. Now let's revise your basic F3 level. This is correct entry. This is wrong entry. This is correct entry. The first entry is correct entry. The second entry is wrong, wrong entry. So now let's make the correcting entry. Let's make the correcting entries. Listen. In the first entry, you should have credited the cash. And in the second entry, you also did credit the cash. So there is no mistake in cash. There is no mistake in the cash. Now, in the first entry, you should have debited provision and PL. You should have debited provision and PL, but you didn't. So let's do it. Let's do it. Provision debit by 4600, PL debit by 1400. And now, you know, in the correcting entry, our objective, our objective is to close suspense account, is to close suspense account and we open suspense account on the debit side. Let's close the suspense account. Let's close the suspense account 6000. This is the correcting entry. This is called correcting entry, correcting entry. This is called correcting entry. This is called correcting entry. Now, as a student, you may ask one thing. As a student, you may ask one thing, sir, how to adjust these things? How to adjust these things in the financial statement? Forget about the suspense account. How to adjust these numbers in the financial statement? Very easy. The provision, provision will no more be part of, now provision will no more be part of, no more be part of your year-end balance sheet. Provision, liability will no more be part of year-end SOFP. Although, 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 there is no requirement of SOFP in this question. Although there is no requirement of SOFP in this question, but provision will not be part of year-end SOFP. Second thing, you just debited PNL. So PNL, this this debit PNL is your operating expenses. It will be part of your admin expenses. So you need to increase. You need to increase your admin expense by fourteen hundred. 
you need to increase your admin expense by 1400 and I'll do it. You don't worry. Okay. Now, should I post? See, I just credited my suspense by 6000. In the correcting entry, I just credited my suspense by 6000. So let's credit it suspense. Let's let's credit suspense by C. I just did. I just did credit suspense by 6000. I just did credit suspense by 6000. Now, as a student, you may ask, sir, the suspense account is still not closed. The suspense account is still not closed. Students don't worry about it. I'll, I'll handle it. Students don't worry about it. I will handle it. I will handle this suspense account. I will handle this suspense account. You just treat on the main main things and this these two entries, one and two. That's it. And the special thing is you just have to book 1400 in admin expenses. You just have to book 1400 in admin expenses. That's it. That's it. Okay, now one more thing. I have, I know there is a tax adjustment, but I am just ignoring the tax adjustment for the time being, just for me. Ignore the tax adjustment for the time being so that let's finish the suspense account thing first, then go, then go to point number three. I'm doing point number four. On 30th September X5, on 30th September X5, active students, please think nine months after the, from the start of the year end. Nine months from the beginning of the year end, MIMS company made a one for four. One for four means 25%. One for four means 25%. The exercise price was 3.5 per share. The proceeds were correctly accounted for in cash. You know, because of right issue, we receive cash. Because of right issue, we receive cash. So they are saying that, yes, they debited the cash correctly. They are saying that they debited the cash correctly, debited the cash correctly with a corresponding credit entry being made in the suspense account. That means these innocent people, these innocent people forgot, forgot to credit share capital and share premium. I'm sure you all know the entry of right issue. They forgot to credit share capital and share premium, which I have to do it now, which I have to do it now. Okay, which I need to do it now. Don't worry. Now, first of all, look at the share capital at the beginning of the year. Let's let me move the screen. What was the share capital? See the question. The share capital was 60,000 and face value is one. See the face. Don't forget the face value. Share capital is $60,000 at the beginning of the year. And face value is one. Can you tell me number of shares? Share capital, ordinary share capital is $60,000. And face value is one per share. So number of shares obviously is 60,000. Number of shares obviously is 60,000 shares. Number of shares obviously is 60,000 shares. 60,000 shares. Okay. Now, see it. Have a look. Have a look. Have a look. Wait. See. Your number of shares were 60,000 shares at the beginning. And there was a 25%, there was a 25% right issue. There was a 25% right issue. There was a 25% right issue. So 60,000 times 25% new shares are 15,000 shares. New shares are 15,000 shares, 15,000 shares, exact, right? Now, what is your issue price? Obviously, right issue is not a free issue. Right issue is a monetary issue. So the IP issue price was 3.5. Face value was $1, so share premium should be 2.5. Share premium to be 2.5, okay? So now let's make the original entry for right issue. Let's make a very easy original entry for right issue. So listen, we issued 15,000 shares. We issued 15,000 shares and we received how much? How much? 3.5 for one, one share. We received cash of 3.5. So bank will be debited by 15,000 multiplied by 3.5. 15,000 multiplied by 3.5 is 5,200. Bank debit. Bank debit 5,200. Now, whenever 
you issue new shares you credit the ordinary share capital whenever you issue new shares you credit the ordinary share capital so 15000 multiplied by face value is 1 15000 multiplied by face value is 1 so ordinary share capital will be credited by 15000 and my respected student what is the difference the difference is 37 500 the difference is 37 500 37 500 so bank debit share capital credit and share premium credit bank debit share capital credit and share premium this entry we should have made this entry we should have made but this sorry to say this is stupid accountant just debit the bank or cash the stupid accountant just debit the bank or cash and he or she did not credit anything he or she did not credit anything so the two sides are not same and when the two sides are not same we open suspense we open suspense so 52500 on the credit side so 52500 on the credit side now can any gentleman make the third correcting entry yes in the correcting entry see just compare these two entries bank is perfect bank is perfect bank is perfect there is no mistake in the bank Yes, you should have credited share capital and share premium, but you didn't. So let's do it. OSC will be credited by 15,000 and share premium will be credited by 37,500. Okay. And now obviously you need to debit suspense account. Obviously you need to debit suspense account by 52,500. Okay. This is the correcting entry. 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 Now just look at the magic. Look at the magic. You will, you will say, sir, you close the suspense account. Sir, finally, finally, you close the suspense account. Can you see this correcting entry? Suspense account is being debited. In this correcting entry, suspense account is being debited. So let's debit it. Let's debit it. See. 15,000 one time and then 37,500. This is OSC and this is premium. So now can you see the both sides? Both sides are same. Here it is 52,500. Here it is 52,500. Suspense account is finally closed. Suspense account is finally closed. See the screen. Suspense account is finally closed. Suspense account is finally closed. But now take my advice. This I only taught you because there are some students who want to see the full picture. There are some students who want to see the full picture. So for those hardworking students, I solve this. Otherwise, now in the exam, you know, you don't need to show these working. No need to close suspense account because this suspense account won't go anywhere in your financial statement now this suspense won't go anywhere in your financial statement so now for the purpose of this question just look at the relevant thing only this thing is relevant see or this thing or this thing and this thing is relevant and this thing look at here just this share capital and share premium the right issue thing share capital and share premium the right issue goes in soshi soshi that's it so when you will be making soshi when you will be making soshi you will post this share capital and share premium increase that's it nothing else when you will be making soshi when <clears throat> then you when you will be making soshi when you will be making soshi you will have to you just have to put this right issue share capital and share premium nothing else nothing else else everything is just for fun but yes i showed you did this because in my normal class in my, in my normal classes, I have also solved one question like this of suspense account. I have also solved one old question of suspense account. I forgot the name of that question right now. It's with T or something. Okay. But in the exam, you don't need to make this suspense and no need to show this closing because I know when you guys were in F3 level, you used to run away from suspense. You used to run away from suspense. Yes, Tadian. Tadian. Yes, I taught one Tadian. Tadian question in my normal class. I solved one Tadian question in my normal class of suspense account like this. Okay. So don't forget these two transactions. These two transactions. First thing, 1400 will be part of admin expenses. 
and this share capital and share premium increase will go in soshi statement of changes in equity okay now just for your easiness i want you i would like to say read the point number 7 first read the point number 7 first because they all are connected just for your efficiency i am doing this mims company paid a dividend of 0.04 per share on all on all existing shares at 31st december x5 see the dividend paid on the year end the dividend paid on the year end ordinary dividend paid on the year end but see the stupidity stupidity they book this dividend in admin expenses never never ordinary dividends are not expense ordinary dividends must be deducted from retained earning ordinary dividend must be deducted from retained earning it should be part of soshi it should be part of soshi but see the stupidity but i should say one thing please this thing came four to five times in the kit in the exam kit this is a routine error in the exam kit this is the routine ad adjustment that they book that they book ordinary dividend as an expense that they book ordinary dividend as an expense that's their routine thing so as a student you may ask sir first of all let's calculate the dividend and then make the entry okay let's do it let's do it easy thing for you see at the beginning of the year how many shares were there 60000 shares see the screen at the beginning of the year how many shares were there 60000 and then on 30th september x5 we issued more 15000 shares we issued more 60 15000 right shares so by the end on the last day of the year end we had 75000 shares on the last day of year end we had 75000 shares and it was written in the question it was written in the question that we gave dividend to all shareholders we gave dividend on 31st december x5 so that means all 75000 shareholders okay now what is the formula of total ordinary dividends number of shares issued multiplied by dividend per share number of shares issued multiplied by dividend per share which is 0.04 4 cents means 4 cents means 0.04 so this make $3000 dividend this make $3000 dividend okay now can you tell me what should be the entries just those students who love the entries i am making entries for them otherwise those who don't like entries please don't follow the entries the entry should be this retained earning debit 3000 and cash or bank credit 3000 but what entry they made what entry this these stupid people stupid people made they made this entry they made this entry admin expense debit admin expense debit admin expense debit 3000 and cash credit 3000 can anybody tell me what will be the third entry now you guys are old enough old enough to make this retained earning debit 3000 and admin expense credit that's it so just retain earning debit means retain earning debit means you, this should be this should be deducted from soshi ordinary dividends are deducted from soshi first thing and also please correct the admin expense that's it also please correct the admin expense i think this adjustment was very easy i think this adjustment was very easy please write the on the chat box if you if you understand it if you understand this adjustment it was not difficult okay <clears throat> now so we did point number 1 we did 2 and 4 1 2 4 and 7 we did 1 2 4 and 7 now come to 3 you know it's my favorite adjustment the tax adjustment total tax packet total tax total tax you know whenever in the in the income statement we always report total tax and total tax means sum of two taxes current tax and defer tax current tax and defer tax current tax and defer tax and this adjustment comes in your 
exam kit or past paper previously two to three times, right? Look at here. Normally, normally when you are in profits, so tax department charge tax from you. When you are in good times, tax department charges tax from you, and that's your expense. But when you are in bad time, <clears throat> when you are bad time, losses time, tax department give you relief, give you relief, and which is your income, which is a benefit, which is a benefit. Okay, so always there is in question. Don't expect that always. Don't ex expect that always you will get the current year tax provision or current year tax expense. It's sometime income. It's sometime income. Now wait. The income tax figure in the trial balance relates to under over provision openly. Say thanks to them. Say thanks to them. They are openly saying in the trial balance you have under over. So as it is debit side, so it is as it is debit side, so it is under provision, which is expense. As this is debit side, so it is under provision, it is an expense. Clear? Now the current tax is estimated to be. Tax refund, refund. There is no current tax provision. There is current tax income. Good days. Current tax income, they are giving you benefit. So it's not this 1.2 million is not expense. This is income. In 90% previous question, this, this is an expense. You, this used to be an expense, remember? Now this is an income. Now, in addition to this, the deferred tax liability, C. Say again, thank God. The deferred tax liability, closing ready-made liability is given. Even if you remember, in your normal question, they give you taxable TD. They give you taxable TD. And with taxable TD, you have to multiply by tax rate. And then you calculate deferred tax liability. In this question, they are giving you ready-made deferred tax liability. Say thanks to examiner. They are giving you closing ready-made deferred tax liability. Okay. Now, can anybody check the opening deferred tax liability? Can anybody check the opening deferred tax liabilities? It is 7,700. Okay. Now let me solve something for you. Let me solve something for you. Look at here. Current tax refund is 1,200, which is income. Current tax refund is 1,200, which is income. Income and income, I will write with negative number. Then under provision of 140, I think it was 140, right? 140 is an expense. 140 is an expense. These two things make your current tax. These two things make your current tax. Now come to defer tax. Now come to defer tax. Now come to defer tax. Very, very tasty in this question. Opening defer tax liability is 7,700. Closing is 8,200. Can you tell me defer tax liability is increasing or decreasing? Increasing or decreasing? It's increasing. So there will be a defer tax charge of 500, which is an expense. Go, 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 go. It will be added, add defer tax charge of how much 500. Can you tell me the net answer is expense or income? I think the net answer is 560 negative income. This is your income, income. That's it. And only you don't have to make the bal SOFP in this question. You don't have to make the SOFP. Just income is enough. Income is enough. It will go after PBT. It will be added. It will be added after PBT. 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 Student, these are scoring marks. If you can't score these marks, then please don't expect a expect pass. Then you deserve something special. Then you deserve to spend pounds if you don't know this thing. Sorry to say, sorry to these are very, very easy. And if you have taken normal classes, uh, in my lectures, seven to eight classes of final accounts are included. Eight classes are over, over more than enough. It's too much. Same thing, same thing, repeating, repeating, repeating. Okay. Now, again, easy. Believe me, it's easy. Because when I teach these IS, I repeat things many times, many, many times. Now, point number five. Let me write the word easy or very easy. Very easy. You know, my beautiful students, my, my dear students, you know, in investment property, fair value model, we never do depreciation. 
in investment property fair value model we never do depreciation otherwise people will make memes otherwise you will be posted on facebook and people will make your memes <laughs> that you depreciated the investment property on fair value model please don't do this please don't do this now look at this say this accountant should be a, should be ashamed see mims acquired an investment property for 20 million yes this is a cash flow there is a baby requirement of three marks in this question of cash flow this cash they they bought investment property it's a non current asset for investment so this is an investment cash flows on the beginning of the accounting period on the beginning of the accounting period and decided to use the fair value model that's it finish finish easy now it's very easy to account for the investment properties now as the properties now stupidity starts now <laughs> stupidity starts now as the property is expected to have a 20 year useful life depreciation was recorded on this basis depreciation was recorded on this basis see this this is this is acca <laughs> the fair value of the property at 31st december x5 has been assessed at 22 million yes this is relevant but no accounting has been taken in place relation to this so you need to bring it to fair value yes this is your job you need to bring it to fair value all depreciation and amortization is charged on pro rata basis to to admin expenses not cost of sale see they have booked this depreciation in admin expenses so you need to do the correction in admin expenses you need to do the correction in admin expenses giving you just one minute to think over it just one minute to think over it although this adjustment is very easy honestly this is easy So first of all, one mistake, one mistake is they, they booked a wrong depreciation, just reversed it. They booked a wrong depreciation, just reversed it. And secondly, booked the gain from 20 to 22, from 20 to 22, 2 million gain in PNL, 2 million gain in PNL. See this thing. See this thing. They booked a wrong, wrong depreciation is 20,000. Divide by 20 years, this is 1,000. This 1,000 is a wrong depreciation. They, they by mistakenly, mistakenly, they added, mistakenly, they added, mistakenly, they added in ad admin expenses. So remove remove this 1,000 from admin. No, no need to make entry. Examiner, don't make entry at all. Remove this 1,000 from admin expenses. Okay, one more thing. From 20 to 22, this entry, investment property debit, 2,000. And other PL credit or gain, PL credit or gain income credit 2000. So this gain is normally added in investment income. This gain is normally part of investment income in the income statement. Investment in income in the income statement, you, you don't have to make SOFP. Please listen very carefully. You don't have to make SOFP in this question. So just two things. One thing is correct the depreciation. Other thing, correct book the gain. That's it. That's it. This adjustment also done. This adjustment also done. OCI, why somebody is asking OCI? No, no. In IS 16, we book in OCI. My dear student, my dear student in IS 16, IS 16, 1, 6, 16, upward revaluation goes in OCI, not in IS 40, please. Okay, now, okay, now, now let's move to the last requirement. It's IS 38. Let's move to the last requirement. It's IS 38. And I expect you, I expect you to, that you have done standard as well. 
first of all all of you say in one voice ad advertisement cost is always expense advertisement according to is 38 adver advertisement goes in pnl that's it no more discussion advertisement goes in pnl one shot one shot pnl now mems company incurred a number of expenses in relation to brands during the year and has capitalized the capitalize capitalize means asset capitalized means asset capitalized means asset okay 1.3 million cash was paid to promote promote advertisement 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 okay of its major brand which is deemed to have an indefinite indefinite life this advertisement expense should never be capitalized it should go in pnl so book this 1.3 million in admin so book this 1.3 million in admin expense book this 1.3 million in admin expense simple simple admin expense simple admin expense that said no more discussion no more entries even no more entries even <clears throat> now 2 million cash was paid in october x5 to acquire a brand yes acquiring a brand is a non current asset acquiring this is not internally generated brand this is purchase brand this this is purchase brand this, this is not internally generated brand this is purchase brand so my respected students yes we capitalize it and yes it will go in cash flow we have done this investment whenever we buy whenever we buy a non current asset whenever we buy a non current asset this is a this is a this outflow goes in investing activities this outflow goes in investing activities okay now 2 million was paid on 1st october x5 to acquire a brand from one of its competitors mems see this date 1st october x5 means only 3 months left before the year end only only o n l y o n l y only 3 months left before the year end mems company expect the brand to have a useful life of 5 years yes it's a finite life finite life you have to depreciate finite life you have to depreciate you have to amortize finite life you have to depreciate you have to amortize keep it in mind okay now mems company intends to sell it after 5 years at the point of sale it is estimated that the value of the brand will have increased take minute wait making full making full they have started making you fool this is called game game and so no amortization has been accounted for in the year my dear students you know for intangible assets you cannot use revaluation model it's very difficult it's very difficult to use revaluation model for intangible assets and i hope you have studied this is this is the technical point in is 38 revaluation model is only allowed if active 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 market for that intangible asset exists if active market for that intangible asset that means that intangible asset is sold on daily basis and this brand is our brand this brand we just bought it it is not going to be sold on daily basis the brand the brand original brand no 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 so you cannot apply revaluation model you cannot apply revaluation model so don't think about this revaluation stuff here simply simply depreciate it 3 months simply depreciate october november december october november december 3 months depreciation how wait 2 million means 2000 divided by 5 years 5 years per annum it is 400 per annum multiply by 3 upon 12 400 per annum multiply by 3 upon 12 this is your depreciation this is your depreciation 100 and this depreciation will be part of admin expenses this will be part of admin expenses this will be part of admin expenses so you need to increase admin expenses by 100 you need to increase admin expense by 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 100 you need to increase admin expense by 100 okay luckily i have discussed all the adjustment of this question yes it's taking time because i am teaching for teaching purpose i am repeating things i am repeating things it takes time but in the exam you won't have to incur this this much time if you have already done good practice if you have already done good practice
now read the requirements. Read the requirements. Read the requirements, please. Three things you have to do. Prepare the statement of profit and loss. No more Soshi, only statement of profit and loss. And they are not asking any working now. Only they are, they want a statement. They want a statement. Number two, they want, they want a statement of changes in equity. Soshi. And finally, they want investing three marks. See, three marks. This is three marks. They want cash flow from investing activities and cash flow from financing activities. These are the three requirements. These are the three requirements. These are the three requirements. I will solve it on Excel. I will solve it on Excel, but won't take much time now. Won't take much time now. Now, wait. In, in this question, it was clearly written. See that all depreciation, this point, this point students are asking all depreciation and amortization is charged to admin expenses. In this question, all depreciation and amortization was charged to admin expenses. In this question, all depreciation and amortization is charged to admin expenses. Okay. I have a request with you guys. If please copy, Please take a picture of this. Otherwise, now I'm going to switch my screen. I'm going to switch from iPad to laptop. I am going to switch from iPad to laptop and I'll solve it in front of you. I'll solve it in front of you on Excel, okay? So please take the picture. Yes, if nothing is written, then normally depreciation is part of cost of sales. But normally, normally, this is the practice of examiner. They guide you for depreciation. They guide you for depreciation. Respected students, they guide you for depreciation. Okay. Now, let me shift myself to Excel. Just a second. Okay. Can you see there is a there is something written in front of you? Now, as we have very limited time and already we have taken a lot of time because of the repetition and all. So I have already written the names. I have already in the exam, you won't be given these written names. <laughs> you have to type it. Some some innocent students sometime ask me, sir. We will, will we get this or these all written in the examination room? No, you have to type it. You have to type it. Now, let me do some working for you. Admin expense and tax expense is a bigger head, but honestly, honestly, look at here. If you see, if you see the marking scheme, examiner even didn't do the working for these. Examiner now directly do in the income statement using brackets. Using brackets, they directly do it. They don't care. They don't care about these workings. So, but just for you, I'm doing it here. As per TV, what are the admin expenses? What are the admin expenses? I think they are 10,900. Okay. Now, hope you remember there was a 1400 provision. There was a 1400 provision and we have to increase. We have to increase the expense. We have to increase the expense, okay? Then promoting brand, promoting brand was an expense. Promoting brand 1300 was an expense, but they didn't book it as an expense. Promoting brand was an expense, but they didn't book it as an expense. So let's book it. Then amortization 100, amortization 100. Recently we did, it's also an expense. Depreciation of investment property, they forcefully, these fool people forcefully booked it. So let's subtract it. Let's subtract it from admin expenses. Okay. Now, dividend. They mistakenly booked 3000 dividend. They mistakenly included 3000 dividend. So let's subtract it. Let's remove it. Okay. So finally, finally, your admin expenses will be 9700. Your admin expenses will be 9700. Okay. Now, just take a minute for this. Your tax expense under provision was, I think, 140. Yes, it was an expense. Sorry. Your current tax, remember your current tax, the current tax receivable was 
1200 your current tax income was 1200 and increase in defer tax expense was 500 so let's 560 was your this income wait a minute wait a minute again sorry yes okay now let's make something here come to revenue what is your sales revenue there was no adjustment of sales revenue i told you to take the picture i told you to take the picture if you didn't take it it's not my fault so your revenue was 24 300 then your cost of sales cost of sales was originally cost of sales was 11 600 but you need to deduct you need to deduct 700 you need to deduct 700 remember remember so it will be 11 600 just showing you some working minus 700 11 600 minus 700 will give you 10000 10900 10900 now calculate the gross profit this is your gross profit admin expenses admin expenses respected student admin expenses i have already done working but i want to do it with negative sign so let's go to admin expenses and pick it up okay now distribution cost no adjustment for distribution cost no adjustment for distribution cost copy it as it is okay now wait 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 profit before interest and tax profit before interest and tax profit let me highlight gp these three that's it profit before interest and tax is 3600 negative there is no positive profit you have a negative profit you have a negative profit here you have a negative profit now how much is the interest expense how much is the interest expense finance cost finance cost interest expense or you write finance cost just pick from the question it was 1400 it was 1400 and yes this is the expense so write it ne with negative sign investment income already in the question investment income was 500 already in the question trial balance investment income was 500 i can't see the chat box now okay so please i can't see the chat box just for a few minutes so investment income was 500 and you remember there was an upward revaluation there was some upward gain on fair value of investment property so that was i think that was i think 2000 so this make this makes 2500 positive this makes 2500 prof positive now wait let's calculate profit or loss before tax profit or loss before tax this 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 and this see these three numbers these three numbers so again the answer is again the answer is negative 2400 now for tax expense my dear student we have already done this working for tax expense we have already done this working so let's just adjust the last two numbers 3060 3060 now wait john now just wait 30 seconds or one minute and have a look have a look and please don't take tension this working is not difficult yes dealing with the question some part of this question was technical otherwise this question was better than better than ratios question this question was better than ratios question wait one thing we did wrong one thing we did wrong sorry one thing we did wrong you have a tax income negative 560 means tax income income so normally in the income statement when tax is an expense when tax is an expense then you deduct it when tax is your expense then you deduct it so you will copy it with the positive sign just think over it all of you at this time tax is not your expense it's your income income so income comes with positive sign in the income statement okay now my mistake sorry this is your profit loss after tax this is your loss after tax let me open the chat box my dear student listen tax is an income this time tax is an income income net amount is the income and income always come in the income statement positive 
in the income statement income comes with a positive sign expenses with we deduct expenses we add we add income Yes, you can write tax income. We can write tax income. Yes. Okay. So now let's move. Now let's move. Please don't uh, use pen. Please don't use ten pen on the on your sheet. Now, now let's move. Let's do the soshi thing. Now go to the trial balance. How much is this ordinary share capital? Your ordinary share capital is sixty thousand. Share premium is zero. No share premium. What is the opening retain earning? It's forty three two hundred. Forty three two hundred. Now, I'm not going to make this wait. I don't want to make this total column now. This is not the requirement. Let me cancel this total column. Let me let me cancel this total column. So because in the new digit world there is no need of making this total column at all there is no need of making this total column please save your time now there is no need of making this total column in this new world okay so these are the opening balance now first of all Remember IS eight in this question. There was some IS eight prior period adjustment, prior period adjustment, and you have to adjust the opening retain earning. So first, do it. Reduce your opening retain earning by seven hundred. Reduce your opening retain earning by seven hundred. And now copy paste, copy paste these balances. Copy paste these balances. Copy paste these balances. Okay. So here you have here you have the copy paste copy paste now. In Soshi, in Soshi, few things goes few things goes in Soshi. Listen, right issue yes we'll post bonus issue yes but there is no bonus issue in this question. Third thing which goes in the Soshi is total comprehensive income or you call it profit because in this question there is no revaluation in this question there is no revaluation so forgot about revaluation but yes about profit and loss the fourth thing goes in is ordinary dividends the fourth thing goes is ordinary dividends and fifth thing sometime sometime there is a transfer entry there is a transfer entry of is 16 revaluation reserve debit and retain earning credit in this question there is no and sometimes just for revision purpose i'm saying sometimes during the year you issue convertible loan note sometimes during the year you issue a convertible loan note a convertible loan note so convertible when a, whenever a convertible loan note is issued whenever a convertible loan note is issued there is a there is a there is a equity option a new equity option arises with convertible loan note so that also goes in soshi but in this question no such things so let's start first of all post right issue right issue because of remember the entry of right issue because of right issue share capital increased by 15000 share capital increased by 15000 and retain earning increased by 37500 so share capital increased by 15 and retain earning increased by 37500 no need to make the total column no this is not any in any exam solution now there is no total column leave the total column now profit and loss my dear student profit or loss is adjusted in retain earning profit or loss is adjusted in retain earning simply pick it from income statement c simply pick it from income statement c i just did now what are the dividends paid dividends paid are 3000 and dividends paid are also deducted from retain earning dividends paid are also deducted from retain earning dividends paid are also deducted from retain earning so now let's this is 75 this is how much 37500 and this is wait 42500 and these two okay so that's the end of these two requirements that's the end of these two requirement let me open the chat box let me see
Okay. Now, finally, make the two activities. Finally, make the two activities. Finally, make the two activities, the investing and the investing activities and the financing activities. Okay. In investing activities, in investing activities, you write, you write purchase of non-current asset. If you have bought any non-current asset, you will write the outflow. So yes, you bought the brand for 2000. You bought the brand for 2000. Remember, you bought the brand for 2000 and then you bought investment property on 1st January on the first day of accounting period for 20,000, for 20,000, okay? So these are the two outflows. These are the two outflows, nothing else. These are the two outflows. These are the two outflows. So in investing activities, the total net cash outflow is 22,000. In investing activities, the total net cash outflow is 22,000 now go to the financing activities in the financing activities yes you issued new shares you issued new shares and remember the entry which i showed you it was i think 52500 yes it was 52500 it was 52500 and then there is no non current liabilities movement we didn't read anything about repayment of loan or issue of loan notes we didn't read anything about we didn't read anything about issue of loan notes or repayment of loan notes so ignore it but yes there is ordinary dividends paid of 3000 there is ordinary dividends paid of 3000 so you need to deduct it you need to deduct it okay so finally 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 now Okay, so this is how, this is how, this is the end of this question. I just want, want to ask one question. Did you find ratios question difficult or this question difficult? Keep one thing in mind. We did this on the second number. I have intentionally did it this on second number because students normally find ratio analysis difficult. Students normally find ratio analysis difficult. Which question was difficult? Can you tell me ratio is one? Yes, ratio is difficult. Yes, final account. Final account is not difficult. Final account, this type of final account, this was achievable because many things was related from your book or, your, or from your lectures. See, investment property, the taxation packet, the right issue thing, these are normal adjustment, routine adjustment, routine adjustment. I would give you one last advice, one last advice to you guys. Keep a folder for your mistakes. Maintain a folder for your mistakes. Whenever you do any mistake during your study, write it somewhere. Special folder for mistakes. Write at least 150 mistakes in it and then revise it so that you don't repeat it and try to write that mistake in detail that this was this was written and you you took it in this way you took it in this way this was written and you interpreted it wrong try to write notes on your mistakes and make a file of your mistakes then keep revising it and try not to repeat it this will help you. This will help you. Believe me. Believe me. This will help you make a folder for your mistakes. Make a folder for your mistakes. And to be very honest, there are some times of studies. There are some times. Even if you see me, I also, I also don't take any break, anything. Last Sunday, I still, I'm talking about the last Sunday, 20th Feb. In the class, I also told I took two classes of three hours, continuous three, three hours classes webinar. And it's very difficult because there is no mic. There is no mic in this class. And it's very difficult to take online class because you sit on the chair. Normally, when we take physical class, we move, we, we move here and there and we just do fun. But in online class, constantly you have to speak. Constantly you have, you have to speak. So I took six hours class on Sunday, six hours three, three hours, two classes. One is SBR and one, one is SBR P2P sessions and one was PX session. And then I did business meetings also. And it was Sunday. It was Sunday plus it was my birthday as well. But I, I worked all, all, all day I worked because I know 
once i'll be free with these stuff i can go anywhere and i can take a week off i can take a week off i can take 10 days off but this is the right time to work hard we we should know this is the right time so please don't waste your money don't waste your exam fees don't waste your precious time lot of jobs are waiting to be very honest i am connected with many many audit firms partners in, in i'm talking about the pakistan because the issue is many students going abroad now after after affiliation people are going abroad after part 2 people are so there is a shortage of accountants there is a shortage of good accountants i would say good accountants so if you clear paper and if you work ethically good jobs and lot of opportunities are waiting for you but try to try to first finish these papers okay so i will also update the recording of this class soon okay so take care and best of luck and stay motivated and uh, behave ethically on the whatsapp group okay thank you take care bye bye